Imagine this for a moment. The deep ocean, vast, uh, silent, mostly unseen. Right, a whole world down there. Exactly. But deep within that realm, well, a new kind of silent hunter is stirring. Not a natural one, though. No, definitely not a creature. And it's certainly not your traditional submarine, you know, with a crew running things inside. We're hacking technology here. We are. We're talking about a machine, stealthy, autonomous, and... Uh, really built to reshape naval strategy right now. And emerging from Australia, interestingly enough. Precisely. Yeah. Welcome to the Deep Dive, your shortcut to being well-informed. We cut through the noise to get you straight to what really matters. And today, the matter at hand is pretty significant. It really is. Today, we're pulling back the curtain on Ghost Shark. That's Australia's extra-large autonomous undersea vehicle, or XLAUV. It sounds like something out of science fiction, almost. It does. But this isn't just some new gadget. It's being called a billion-dollar gamble, even a clear warning to Beijing. It could potentially be the, well, the future of naval warfare. High stakes, then. Very high. So our mission for you today is simple. Get you quickly up to speed on this cutting-edge tech and what it really means. We'll unpack what it is, why it was developed so incredibly fast. The strategy behind it, especially in a place like the Indo-Pacific. And how it might just redefine sea power as mm. we know it. Yeah. We've looked at some uh, really insightful reports, strategic breakdowns, basically synthesizing the key analyses out there for you. It's a fascinating development, yeah. truly. And it, it signals, I think, a big shift away from how things are normally done in military procurement. Oh, absolutely. Not just the tech, but the whole process. Exactly. The model they used, like, yeah. it's quite something. Okay, let's dive right into this uh, silent revolution, the ghost shark. Right. So... At its core, what are we actually talking about? Well, think of it, like some analysts say, as a submarine without a crew. That's the easiest way to picture it. An XLAUV, Extra Large Autonomous Undersea Vehicle. Right. Designed to operate completely independently. Yeah. No humans on board. Key characteristics. Inherently stealthy, that's crucial. Very long range. And it can stay submerged for, well, for extended periods way beyond what humans could endure. So it's not just a drone submarine, it's it's a different philosophy, isn't it? It is. It's a totally different way of thinking about undersea presence and operations. And its capabilities. What's it designed to do down there? Its core jobs are extensive. Primarily, it's built for ISR, that's intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. Gathering info in sensitive spots without risking lives. Exactly. Critical information gathering. And this is a big bead, but it's also designed with the capacity for strike missions. So it can fight, too. It can. It has an offensive punch. And listen to how Australian officials talk about it. They're not shy. They call it the highest tech capability in the world. Wow. And they say Australia is leading the world in autonomous underwater military capabilities. Wow. This isn't just talk. They see it as a global benchmark. And they're putting serious money behind it. That tells you something. Oh, definitely. The investment is, well, staggering. Around 1.1 billion U.S. dollars committed for dozens of these things. Dozens, okay. And beyond that initial sum, there's another 1.7 billion dollar commitment over five years just for manufacturing them in Australia. Building them locally, that's huge. But the timeline, that's what really jumps out. It's incredibly ambitious. First units entering service, January 2026. That's the plan. January 2026. For a defense program this complex, that's lightning fast almost unheard of. Which naturally leads to questions about the specifics, I guess. Range, payload, exact numbers. All classified. And that's no surprise, really, given how important this is strategically. Yeah, the classification itself tells a story, doesn't it? It highlights the stealth, the critical role they expect these things to play. Right. So connecting this back for you, the listener, this isn't just a new weapon. It's more fundamental. It's a signal of change. Exactly. It's a shift in how navies are thinking about future conflict. Mm. It gives you a concrete peek into the next generation of defense, where autonomy isn't just a buzzword anymore, it's becoming real, operational. That rapid timeline, it really begs the next question. Because let's be honest, major defense programs usually take decades. Decades. <laughs> often bogged down in bureaucracy, cost overruns. Right. So the ghost shark speed, it feels like an anomaly. How on earth did they manage it? It is astonishing. From the initial design concept to actual production starting in less than three years. Less than three years. Yeah. I mean, think about that pace in the defense world. 
it really makes you ask, how did they pull that off? They must have broken the usual rules. They absolutely did. They broke with convention through this really innovative co-development model. Co-development. Yeah, a direct partnership between the Australian Defense Force and Endural Industries, which is a U.S. defense startup known for moving fast. So not the usual customer-supplier relationship. Oh. Not at all. They were co-developing it and co-funding it together. And crucially, they embedded Navy personnel right alongside Endural's engineers. Ah, so instant feedback. Exactly. A rapid feedback loop. Constant communication, quick adjustments. More like how a tech startup works than a traditional defense project. Sharing the risk and the urgency. Both. They share the risk and they definitely share the sense of urgency. And Dural also played a big part by taking its own risks. How so? Well, they invested their own money early on. They smartly acquired a U.S. company called Dive Technologies, which specialized in AUVs. Okay. And they rapidly scaled up prototypes to speed things along. They even built a, what, $60 million advanced manufacturing facility in Australia specifically for Ghost Shark. Wow, that's serious commitment. More than just fulfilling a contract. Much more. It was a deep shared investment in actually making this work and making it work fast. And the result? The result, as one defense official said, is a world-class capability delivered at record speed. It basically rewrites the rulebook on delivering undersea mass. Undersea mass, meaning getting more capable assets in the water faster, cheaper. Precisely. More persistent presence without needing a human crew on every single platform. So the big takeaway here, the aha moment for you listening, it isn't just about the cool tech. No, not just the tech itself. It's the process, this procurement model. Right. It's a potential blueprint for future defense innovation. Mixing that agile startup approach with military needs, sharing the risk, it shows you can achieve speed that was previously thought impossible. That's the real game changer, potentially. It offers lessons for any country wanting to modernize its defenses quickly. Okay, so we have this incredible tech developed at lightning speed using a revolutionary model. What's the why? What's the strategic thinking behind the ghost shark, especially right now? The strategic rationale is uh, crystal clear, and it's all about geopolitics. Australia is right there, geographically, at the heart of the Indo-Pacific. An increasingly contested region, to put it mildly. Exactly. We're seeing Chinese naval activity patrols, incursions becoming much more frequent, more assertive across that whole vast area. And for Australia, securing its maritime borders, that's a massive challenge, isn't it? Thousands of kilometers of coastline. Immense. Stretching across both the Pacific and Indian Oceans. For years, Australian defense planners have wrestled with how to effectively monitor and defend that enormous space. Traditional ships and subs can only cover so much ground, and they're expensive, they need crews. Precisely. And this is where Ghost Shark comes in as a key part of the answer. How so? It offers an alternative. It's cheaper to build and operate than a crewed submarine. It's faster to deploy. And critically, it's seen as expendable. Expendable, meaning you can risk sending it places you wouldn't send a crude vessel. Exactly. Not that they plan to just throw them away, but losing one doesn't involve the human cost or the huge political fallout of losing a conventional submarine with sailors on board. That makes sense. And it fills a gap, doesn't it? Because those big Ayuki nuclear subs are still a long way off. A very long way off. We're talking the 2030s for the first U.S. ones and the 2040s for the ones built in Australia. That's decades. Whereas Ghost Shark. Ghost Shark, as we said, operational in just over a year, January 2026. So it gives Australia a near-term significant capability to counter China's presence now. Doing that ISR work, the surveillance, yeah. and potentially strike missions too. Right, at extremely long distances from Australia itself, projecting influence in ways that were previously limited by cost, and, well, human endurance. And the timing of the big announcement wasn't subtle, was it? Not at all. It came just one week after China held a major military parade. Analysts widely saw it as a very direct signal. A signal from Canberra saying, we see what you're doing and we're prepared to counter it. Pretty much. Prepared to counter Beijing's expanding presence in the region. It wasn't just a tech announcement. It was a geopolitical message. So the so what, for you listening, it's about watching how technology like this actively reshapes power dynamics. Absolutely. It's shaping international relations, security in really critical regions right now. It shows how nations are looking for these innovative, sometimes asymmetric ways to project power and deter potential rivals. Especially when facing a much larger, rapidly modernizing military force. 
It can be a real equalizer, or at least a way for smaller but technologically advanced nations to punch above their weight. But the ghost shark isn't operating in a vacuum, right? Australia is doing other things, too. It's part of a bigger picture. That's a vital point. It's not just about this one piece of tech. It's part of a broader strategy combining technology, modernized forces, and diplomacy. Okay, how does it fit with their other naval assets? It's designed to work with them. Think of it as adding a new layer. So you'll have the ghost sharks complementing an enhanced surface fleet, their existing Collins-class submarines, and eventually those future IUAQ submarines. Creating a more integrated layered defense. It's exactly. A much more capable, more lethal Navy overall. More flexible, better able to cover those vast maritime approaches we talked about. It's about the system, not just the individual parts. And alongside the tech upgrades, there are diplomatic moves happening in parallel. Yes, and they're equally significant. Look at the landmark defense treaty Australia signed with Papua New Guinea, PNG. That raised some eyebrows, didn't it? It really did. The treaty obliges both countries to act together in the face of a common danger. That language is drawn directly from the ANSYS Pact, the U.S.-Australia-New Zealand Treaty, which is a cornerstone of Australian security. That's strong language. Very strong. And what's even more striking, maybe even dramatic, is a provision allowing PNG citizens to serve in the Australian Defence Force. With a path to Australian citizenship. With a path to citizenship. That's a huge shift for PNG, which has traditionally followed a non-aligned foreign policy. Yeah. It signals a much deeper security relationship. So when you put these two things together, the cutting-edge ghost shark tech and the strengthened alliance with PNG. It really marks Australia's boldest strategic move yet to compete with China in the region. They're using both technology and alliances. A comprehensive approach. Absolutely. It helps you, the listener, understand that modern statecraft isn't just about military hardware. It's also about building partnerships, leveraging technology strategically, and shaping the regional environment. It's about building coalitions, not just building weapons. Which brings us nicely to the future. The future of undersea warfare itself. For decades, naval strategy... Well, it revolved around big, visible things, didn't it? Carriers, destroyers, nuclear subs. The capital ships. The platforms everyone could see. But now, with autonomous systems like Ghost Shark, that whole paradigm seems to be shifting. It absolutely is shifting. Autonomy isn't just an add-on anymore. It's moving towards the core of future naval thinking. There was that quote, wasn't there, about owning the undersea battle space. Yes, a powerful statement from some strategists. The free world can own the battle space beneath the waves. And it goes on essentially saying, if you command the sea, you command the world. Strong words. Is that hyperbole or is there something to it? Well, it reflects a profound idea. The ability to operate, gather intelligence, project influence, maybe even deny access to an adversary in the undersea domain. Doing all that persistently, affordably, without putting crews at risk, mm -hmm. that could fundamentally alter global power dynamics. Flipping the script on traditional naval power making the unseen, the autonomous, potentially the most decisive realm. It's a compelling argument. For Australia, the stakes are obviously huge. Ghost Shark offers that near-term way to counter China, secure those vital sea lanes. Project power across those vast distances. Right. But, and this is the crucial test the program has to deliver, it needs to prove that autonomy can provide not just impressive prototypes, but reliable, effective operational fleets. Fleets that truly integrate into how the Navy fights. Exactly. That's the ultimate hurdle. Can they make this work at scale, reliably, day in and day out? So as those first units enter service in 2026? The world will be watching very closely. Yeah, because this isn't just about Australia's Navy. Not at all. It's about a potential global shift in military doctrine. The implications for international security, for technological competition, they're massive. The success, or indeed the challenges of Ghost Shark, could really influence what other navies do for decades, couldn't it? Absolutely. It could reshape undersea warfare globally and maybe even alter the balance of power. Okay, let's bring this all together for you. Today, we've taken a deep dive into Australia's Ghost Shark. You've heard what it is. That uncrewed, stealthy XLAUV built for ISR and Strike. We've looked at how it was developed so incredibly fast, less than three years, using that groundbreaking partnership model, a real lesson in defense innovation. And you understand the why 
Now, its critical strategic role in Australia's plan to counter China's influence in the Indo-Pacific. How it complements their other naval forces and their diplomatic efforts, like that significant new pact with Papua New Guinea. So hopefully you've gained that shortcut to understanding a really pivotal development in global defense. You can see how technology, strategy, and alliances are all weaving together to shape our world in ways we're really only just beginning to grasp. It's happening fast. It really is. Yeah. So here's a final thought for you to chew on. If that old saying is true, if command of the sea really is command of the world, mm. then how will the rise of these silent autonomous hunters like the ghost shark redraw the maps of global power in the coming decades, especially in a world where maybe the unseen becomes the ultimate advantage?